Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced, Vice Chair of the Libertarian National Committee, and I wanted to do this video to mainly go over the Libertarian Party's resources and structure, so that way if you are a member, a candidate, a state chair, um, you just have this uh, breakdown of sort of all the different levels of the party, sort of what their focus is, and sort of how to maximize your impact in making libertarian change within the political space. Okay, because that's really what the Libertarian Party is focusing on how to create libertarian change within the realm of politics. It's not the only realm at which libertarian change can occur. It's not the only vehicle for libertarian change, but in the political space, the Libertarian Party is here organizing to elect candidates, pass ballot initiatives, and uh, lobby legislatures to push politics in a more libertarian direction, in a direction that makes the world more free in our lifetimes. Now, in this presentation, I want to talk about the structure of the Libertarian Party. So what is the national structure? What is the state structure, county structure? Um, also present some resources for candidates, chairs, and membership that they can uh, refer to. And also just some other ideas for community outreach and how to make a difference and create impact. So at the national level of the Libertarian Party, basically you have the Libertarian National Committee, which Basically, their main focus is basically providing support to the country. So they're not the front lines of the party. Really, the front lines are going to be the candidates that are chosen by state and counties. And, the, and it's really the state and county chapters that are the front lines of, of electing candidates, ballot initiatives, lobbying. But at national, we can create resources and provide support where needed. And... At the top of that, you have the libertarian, the actual committee, which is kind of like a board to a uh, corporation. And like a board, you have someone who's in charge, so you should have like a president or chairman of the board. You have the chair of the Libertarian National Committee. Currently, Nick Sowork in the picture, um, in the picture to the to the uh, left, and then I'm the vice chair uh, to the right. So. But basically, chair runs the meetings. The Libertarian National Committee meets four times a year to make decisions regarding party business, what the budget is, um, creating committees, uh, allocating resources. And the money the Libertarian National Committee gets is oftentimes from membership and donations. And then the vice chair sort of is the, the backup chair when the chair can't chair. Okay. Then you have eight regional reps. So basically, the country being 50 states... The 50 states can then choose to organize into different regions. So every two years when there's a national convention, so the national committee meets four times a year, and then there's a national convention every other year to make a decision on who's on the committee. And then also during that period of time, the states then renew what region they're part of. So there's eight regions, states organize, they draw up a regional agreement that details sort of who's in that region and how do they decide who their regional rep is and who their alternate is. So each region is different um, and they're voluntary organized. Some states choose not to be part of a region. And typically in, that, in those situations, they'll use the vice chair kind of as their uh, representative on the board. Okay, five at-large reps. The five at-large reps are basically representatives that don't represent a particular region. They're elected by the delegates at the national convention because each state appoints delegates to the national convention that happens every two years. How many delegates each state has is decided by a mix of your presidential vote total and how many members you have enrolled at national. So basically, the more national membership you have for your state, the more delegates you get. So one reason to always encourage people in your state to become a member of national. Okay. Um, so then what happens is that those delegates will then go to the national convention, select the chair, select the vice chair, select the five at-large reps, and then also select the judicial committee, who's there to hear appeals to any decisions by the national committee. Uh, the executive director is a person who actually runs the party day to day. Think of them as like the CEO. So you have the chairman of the board of the corp of the corporation. The board makes certain high level decisions, but when it comes to day to day running and execution of everything, you appoint a CEO to the company. In this case, we appoint an executive director who runs the day to day. Okay, and then hire staff, etc. Now. 
At the same time, the National Committee can also create committees, either a standing committee that permanently exists, or ad hoc committees that usually have very specific things they need to accomplish, and then are dissolved at the next National Convention. So this is sort of the national infrastructure. Again, national is mainly playing support role, creating training, uh, collecting data um, to provide to the states so that way the states can, um, again, be the front lines, uh, basically resource building, relationship building, uh, looking to make sure we have ballot access for the next national election. It's, it's national, focusing on sort of national issues is just going to be more support roles because most elections are local, statewide, countywide, townwide. So those more local organizations will really be the front lines uh, of libertarian action. So on that note, the state parties generally have a chair. And they're very much structured the same way, where you have a chair, you have a vice chair, and you have a state committee. Now, each state is set up differently, so you have to go check out your state and how they organize their state party, but you'll generally find some state committee. That state may be broken up into regions, maybe broke up by counties, but somehow representation will be sent to a state committee who will make decisions statewide, which is to allocate resources that come from membership and donation with your state party. So again, that's why those memberships are important. Being a member of your national, state, and local party allows them to have the resources they need to do the kind of things we want them to do, to get libertarians elected, get libertarian ballot initiatives passed, and support lobbying efforts. So you have that, but also as another organization that kind of works parallel to all this, you have what's called the Libertarian State Leadership Alliance. Um, and this organization is really sort of a group, it's a separate group, separate from national, separate from state, that is like a collection of all the state chairs to kind of make decisions, allocate funds, raise money, and do other stuff, okay, that maybe is more appropriate in that channel than some of these other channels. So again, there's different channels to get things done. There's different channels to attain and build the resources to make libertarian change within the political sphere. But it's generally the state chapters that make a decision who the statewide candidates are. So if you care about who your Senate candidate is, who your gubernatorial candidate is, and other statewide offices, then it's the state party you want to get involved in. And each state has a different process for how those candidates are selected. And in the very, very front grounds is the county chapters. So in the picture here, we have my good friend Aaron Comey, chair of the Manhattan Libertarian Party, with a giant cutout of um, libertarian superhero Larry Sharp's head, which I think I'm standing behind. Okay, but county chapters have chairs. They usually have vice chairs. Manhattan is one of the few that I know of that doesn't have a vice chair. Uh, and you have, they're going to be the ones who decide local candidates. So if you're running specifically for an office in that county, you need that, you're going to get nominated by that county by whatever process that county's chapter has. And that county chapter will also get money from donations, from memberships. And, you know, if you really want a particular local candidate to get the most support, then what you want to do is really make sure you're driving those memberships to your county party and making donations to that county party because they're going to be the ones who are going to have the most vested interest in supporting that local candidate. Okay, National tries to help everybody out as much as it can, but you want people who are sort of directly linked to it, who are on the ground, who are there, who can best appreciate what is needed. So, you know, again, depending on what you're looking to do, there's different channels for doing so. Okay, so these are sort of the three levels of the Libertarian Party. Now, there's a lot of resources out there. If you're thinking to be a candidate, I highly recommend buying the book you see in the picture right there, How to Win Local Elections. It's, um, or How to Win a Local Election. It, it has a lot of step-by-step -step guides and resources for you to plan your campaign and get it off on the right foot. But there are a lot of videos, uh, recordings, uh, graphics, uh, website templates, and other cool resources that actually have been created for candidates that candidates can use, that state chairs can use, and whatnot by the Libertarian Party uh, at the national level. And those are available at lpaction.org. So if you're looking for some of those resources to help out in your efforts, head over to lpaction.org and make use of them. Also, oftentimes, um, as you get involved in your party, 
oh, a lot of these people are new to you and you want to know maybe who was your state, who is your state chair, who was your state chair, who was your county chair, who is your county chair, um, and a lot of the historical aspects so that way you can dive in uh, informed into your local party, but dive in head first. And LP, LPedia.org has a lot of that in, institutional information on the party so that way you can know sort of what the past is, maybe what past election results were, um, who's who. So I highly recommend checking out LPedia.org. And if you become a candidate, it's a, I highly recommend making sure you make a page for your candidacy over there at LPedia.org because um, it's a great starting place for sort of building up your um, one for search engine purposes and building up sort of your your online profile but there's a lot of other places that get training as a candidate uh, to, in order to have impact um, now if you wanted to get involved with LSLA the Libertarian State Leadership Alliance that I mentioned earlier their website is libertarianleaders.org then my good buddy Michael Pickens runs an organization called the Libertarian Leadership Academy where they do candidate training okay when I was running for USN a lot long ago I went through one of these trainings with uh, Pickens, and it was very useful, had a lot of useful tips, a lot of useful advice that helped make the campaign more effective, and is even more effective the more local your campaign is. So you can find that stuff at libertarianleadership.org. At IALP.org, that's the International Alliance of Libertarian Parties, so if you want to actually go network with people in libertarian parties across the world, you can go to IALP.org. Okay, an organization where basically libertarian parties across the world network, exchange ideas, and uh, stay in touch. Now, another resource that that doesn't train strictly libertarian party candidates, but still a very useful resource if you are a candidate, is the Leadership Institute. They have a lot of online trainings that you can participate in, and sometimes if you're like a state party or a local party, you might be able to organize them to come down and visit you for training. Same thing with the Libertarian Leadership Academy. You might be able to organize people to come down and do a training in your area. Then there's a couple websites I created that are just basically some resources on just basically guiding you throughout the Libertarian world and also just some messaging, branding type videos from, from myself, Larry Sharp, Michael Pickens. So you, there you can check out libertarian101.com or introtheliberty.com. But I would really check out all these resources above first. But if you're getting involved in your county party, there's some things you can really do to give your your local county an edge. Uh, organized community events. When I say organized community events, I don't mean events that come down for people to come down and le- listen to about a particular issue. Just building relationships in your community. Throw a barbecue. Throw a potluck. Have people come down, eat, throw a bowling uh, event or tournament. The idea is just let people engage with the members of your local party because once they like you and they've gotten to know you as a person, they're going to be much more opening or much more open to listening to what you have to say as far as the ideas and the changes you want to create in the world. So first build that connection of the heart and then they'll open up their ears to changing their mind. Uh, organize community media. And when I say here, I don't mean organize a podcast to discuss libertarian ideas. Okay, there's plenty of those. And it's never never a bad thing to start another one. But what your community may want is a local podcast that focuses on local things. Like the local store that's opening up. Or what's going on in the local Little League. And creating these kind of updates that people in your community are going to want to listen to. And marketing it to your community. And this will allow you to have your community's ear when... Oftentimes it's hard because it's hard to get into the existing media so you can create your own media that's already heard or seen by your local community because it serves your community that'll give you access to your local candidates to your local community. Help collect data. This just means knocking on doors and it's one of the most important things you can do because most people aren't taking time to go find out who's running, what's go- what elections are going on, and they're not going online to look it up. Um, they're, they're, people don't look at their emails or it gets caught in their spam filter. So the only way you make sure that they got a, a personal touch is you knock on their door and you shake their hand. But it's not just talking to them and saying, hey, go vote for us. It's sometimes just information collecting, saying, hey, I'm here. Just wanted to ask a few questions, introduce myself, and just want to know what do you care about, okay? Um, 
you know, do you mind if we send you an email once in a while? Um, how basically collecting the information and creating the databases that are going to allow your candidates in the future to know sort of which precincts to focus on, which, uh, which people are kind of already leaning in your direction. And maybe with some soft nudges will eventually kind of come in the more libertarian direction and which people maybe are, you have such a wide gap with that you may want to take care of the low hanging fruit first. And then we'll come back to these people who might be a little bit more difficult. Um, but that only happens by knocking on the doors, shaking the hands, taking the results from that, and documenting it in some sort of database, spreadsheet, etc. Okay, uh, organizing a ballot initiative. Electing candidates is not the only way to make change. You can get referendums on the ballot that actually make change directly and allows you to speak to a specific issue and people who may disagree with you on other issues can work with you to at least get that thing done. Okay, instead of focusing on all the things that we disagree on, we can all organize around the thing that we do agree on. And you can also organize lobbying efforts, okay? When a le piece of legislation comes up for a vote, even if the people who are in office aren't the people you elected, you can still go organize to show up at community meetings, at, at legislature hearings, to speak to why a piece of legislation should be passed and why it shouldn't be passed and possibly be able to change votes on the legislation and changing the outcome for the better. So there are a lot of ways to organize as the Libertarian Party to get things changed. So hopefully you watch this video, kind of gave you a better idea of how everything is structured and who does what. And there's so much more to talk about. My name is Alex Merced, Vice of the Libertarian National Committee. You feel free to reach out to me at any time with any questions. I'm always wanting to be helpful. And uh, thank you guys. Have a great day and enjoy.